everyone, welcome back to another episode of Seek on the Speed 252. I'm super excited to bring this video to y'all today. I thank you for pushing that play button. I thank you for being part of the channel. Thank you all for growing with me. We are growing and growing and growing. I'm greatly appreciated. If you haven't subscribed to the channel yet, please do. I would love to have you part of the channel. Please hit that subscribe button. Please hit that bell button right beside it so we can all grow together and be an awesome community. I like how everybody, you know, reply back to each other's comments, give each other feedback, and answer my questions, and I answer your questions, and it's freaking awesome. You can send me an email at speed 252 at gmail.com. You can send your photos. You can ask questions there. You can do whatever. Some people actually bought merch from there just by, you know, talking with me and me sending them merch out that direction. I'm looking forward to it. Another thing I want to talk about that I'm super excited about is Corvettes and Carlisle, which is in August. I talked to a lot of members so far who email asked me if I'm going to be there. I do plan to be there. Um, I don't know. Right now, I think I'm going to share a booth with Shane and Mike. You know, as y'all know, Shane has a guy. He was the guy that did the, the work on my Corvette. Um, and uh, it's possible I may get sponsored at my own booth there. Either way, I'm definitely planning to be there. I heard a lot of great things about this event. Heard a lot of good people going to be there. So all I know is it's about to go down. It's about to go down. Um, so I'm super excited for that. So let's hop into it. Um, you know, why the Corvette ZR1 sucks. Not my opinion. This is everyone else's opinion. As you all know, I'm a huge fan of Corvettes, as I obviously own one. I'm a huge fan of the Corvette ZR1. I think that's a phenomenal car. Um, 755 horsepower to the crank. Um, it's just it's just freaking crazy to me how you can actually buy those cars these days with that amount of horsepower. And, you know, with me owning a Corvette, um, to even just get this started, let me show you how this even, let me tell you how this got started, right? So one day I was out with my friends, we all driving around, and we usually drive around for a little bit, and we go get something to eat, and we talk about cars, talk about life, things like that. And so when we get to the place that we want to eat at, we park downtown and then there was a couple of guys that walked by my car and they was like, bro, I would never buy a Corvette. And in my head, I'm thinking like, well, you can kind of keep that comment to yourself. I don't really need to know that. And um, or either other guys, they don't really need to know that stuff. Right. You know, just a random person with a group of other guys like, hey, I would never buy a Corvette. And so and another guy walked up and was like, you know, over here, they was like, why would you want to buy a Corvette? Because you can't afford one type of thing. Now, you know, we didn't need him to take up for us, but, you know, it was greatly appreciated to hear that, you know, through somebody else. Because, you know, he came up and was like, yo, your, your car is great. It's an awesome looking car. And those guys are drunk. So it is what it is. But anyways, when that happened, I, I wanted to ask people what they didn't like about the Corvette in general or the Corvette ZL1. For instance, uh, what, what I talked about recently was a lot of the Corvette ZL1 just because it was the latest and greatest that just came out from um, Chevrolet, you know, the fastest um, production car, period, as far as the ZL1 goes, right? And so I went to go ask people a couple of questions, like the ones I talked to in the past. What don't you like about the Corvette ZL1? And so, you know, I made a little list of things that they said, the reason why they don't like the Corvette ZL1 and the reason why they don't think it's a supercar. And so let's hop right into it. The number one reason why they don't like the Corvette ZL1 is because they don't think it's a supercar. And I was like, you know, why don't you think this is a car is a supercar? And they said, because, you know, the, the engine is not in the back, the engine is still in the front. I don't know too many cars that has the engine in the front that is considered a supercar. And I was like, interesting. Hmm. Well, with that being said, do you not think the Corvette Zero One keep up with some of these cars that are considered supercars? He was like, well, well, yeah, in a way, but I mean, you know, it's still not a supercar. And so I was like, why though? Because the engine is not in the back. And he was like, yeah, that makes it not a supercar. I was like, interesting, you know, because everybody has an opinion why the Corvette Zero One is a supercar. Everyone has an opinion why the Corvette is not a supercar. And it just bothers me. Um, that they would say these things because the Corvette Zero One is a phenomenal car in my opinion, and um, for that reason, with the main engine, with the engine not being in the back, is the reason why it's not a supercar. I think this is kind of a little bit unfair because this car keeps up with other supercars. Number two opinion: the reason why this car is not a supercar and the reason why they don't like it is because it don't have the price tag of a supercar. Interesting. So. Um, before I, you know, created this video, I played around with, with um, you know, the uh, Chevrolet.com, and I built the ZR1. So for me, I was like, if I built a ZR1 today, what would I pay? And I went with like the basic package, the basic trim level, because overall, I don't need all the extra stuff, especially with these freaking ventilated seats not working properly. I was like, I could throw it out the door, but it comes with it anyways. So the ZR1 that I built came to about around one hundred and thirty-one thousand dollars, about one hundred and forty thousand after taxes and everything out the door. That's an expensive car. That's a six-figure car right and so let's go ahead and compare the corvette zero one to the ford gt which costs about five hundred thousand dollars right so as we all know and if you don't know the corvette zero one beat the track record lap time at the vr for the ford gt right when that happened everybody went ups and arms like we got a five hundred thousand dollar car right here 
and we have this hundred and fifty thousand dollar car right here that outdid a five hundred thousand car. Now everyone considers the Ford GT a supercar. I don't know anyone that says anywise anything any different. So you have a car that costs five hundred thousand dollars that has a twin turbo V six that got kind of outdid by a car that costs one hundred fifty thousand dollars, a lot lesser and definitely outperformed on the track. Now, at the end of the day, I don't know give and take. You know, if you have both cars in front of you and they say, hey, which one would you rather take? If you're a diehard Chevy person or if you're a diehard Ford person, obviously you're going to take the, the Corvette guy, probably end up taking the Corvette, and the Ford guy, probably take the, the Ford GT. But they're both phenomenal cars. But, you know, it's hard for most people to get a, you know, a, a GT, a Ford GT, and I would love to view one. I would love to do a video on one. I would love to bring one of those videos to the, um, to the, the channel for you all so at some point maybe i can run into somebody that's a ford gt if anybody watching this video right now and you have a ford gt um call me up send me an email i would like to come out i don't care where you at i'll try to make my way out there and um you know and do a video of a review on your ford gt i don't care who you are hit me up um anyways back to the story at hand so you have the ford gt that got outperformed by a corvette but the corvette is not a supercar now, let's hop on back to what I just said from minutes ago. You have the Ford GT there, which costs $500,000. You have the Corvette Z01, which is six figures, still, you know, $150,000, which is a lot of money, just not as up there as a Ford GT, but keep up with these supercars. And so for you to say you don't want to buy the Corvette Z01 because it doesn't have the price tag of a supercar, but it keeps up with supercars, doesn't make any sense to me because it's a phenomenal looking car in general. I mean, I don't care what anybody says. Now, the Grand Sport, the Steam Race, the Z06 was turn heads without a doubt but when you see a ford um excuse me when you see a corvette zr1 out on the highway with that big wang on the back like street speed 717 would say i don't care what no one say you want to turn your head and you're going to look at it you have to appreciate it you're not going to be like uh i'm not looking babe i'm looking let me know when we let me know when it goes back i'm not looking at it like there's no way you have to look at the corvette zr1 because it's that great looking of a car and so for you to say you don't like it because of the price sticker just kind of doesn't make any sense to me. So um, let's just throw that out the window right now as well. Now, another reason why now I kind of don't like this one, but I'm, I'm going to throw this out there because I want to bring it to y'all anyways. And if you are watching this, please subscribe to the channel, by the way, because I love that you're part of the community. Um, another reason why someone said they did not like the Corvette Z01 and it's not a supercar is because it's built by Chevy. Well, you know, Chevy has been around for a while. Ferrari has been around for a while. Lamborghini has been around for a while. And so much other things have been around for a while. It's just crazy to me that you will not consider this car being a supercar because it's built by Chevy. Let's throw this out there. So, you know, as we all know that Corvette, not Corvette, as we all know, General Motors in the process of building a mid-engine Corvette, right? That's what we think it is. We don't know exactly what it's going to be until they release it. And so I think that when they release this base model and you know the Z51 package, that it's probably not going to be as fast as a, um, a Z06 or a Z01, but it probably will be faster than my current Grand Sport, which is completely fine because it needs to be because it's going to be a new model car. And I don't want to have another car that's not as fast as this. Um, and so I think over time, that car will have a lot of advantage to the other supercars that's out there now. Like I got a feeling that you know there's going to be a hybrid, they're going to be an all-wheel drive, and you know LT5, dual overhead cam, um, dual clutch. This car will be it's going to be able to keep up with some of the supercars, if not be a little bit better than some of the supercars that are currently out there. I have seen plenty of videos of the McLarens out doing a Lamborghini, and Lamborghini been around for a while. So, but this person said they won't buy a car from Chevrolet because it's built by Chevy. So Chevrolet would never be able to create a supercar. Well, we'll see, right? I mean, right now, a lot of people are saying the Corvette Z01 is a supercar. A lot of people are saying it's not a supercar because it's not pristine enough because it doesn't have the price tag of a supercar and all this extra stuff. But at the end of the day, if this Corvette mid-engine comes around and be a supercar, what can you say? It's, it's just built by Chevy. Now, to say that you won't buy a Corvette Z01 because it's built by Chevy, don't you kind of consider Chevy and Ford being somewhat kind of equal to each other, right? In a way, like they have the Ford GT, which is a supercar that's built by Ford. Why can't Chevrolet somehow build uh, or build a supercar? So um, I just kind of want to throw it out there, throw it out in the pen as well. Um, another reason why someone said they will not buy the Corvette Z01 because it doesn't have the looks of a supercar. Let's just throw it out the window too, because I don't. I don't I'm just gonna throw this out there, and I know somebody gonna have their opinions about it. Ever since I have had my car look the way it is, the chrome wrap and everything else. 
I have gone places, and I lie to you not. I have had people come to me and say, man, that's a sweet-looking Lamborghini. Now, you know, as far as I goes, I'm not going to change that mind about it. I'm not going to go out of my way and say, hey, this is not a Lamborghini. I'm just going to let that story stand. Um, and I had another guy came to me and said, hey, man, that's a sweet-looking Z06. Well, I'm not going to go out of my way and say it's a grand sport. There's no reason to. But um, but I, I just find it hard to believe for someone to say, like, no, I wouldn't buy the Corvette Z01 because it doesn't look like a supercar. It doesn't look like other supercars. It's a freaking good-looking car. I mean, hands down, everybody has, there, there are some people that are still in love with the C5s and C6s, and I like them, but Chevrolet has stepped that game up a lot to create the C7s. I mean, like, it is a freaking awesome looking car. And then, like I said earlier, you cannot help but to notice this car when it's passing your way. I don't care if it's a Stingray, it's a Grand Sport, it's a Z06, it's a Z01, you have to look. Even if, if I'm driving down the road myself, and a freaking Corvette ZR1 passes beside me, a new or old one. I'm going to look at it. I'm going to look. I'm going to give him a thumbs up. I'm like, yes, that's another Corvette owner. And I may just try to race him. I'll probably end up losing. Um, but I'm going to try to race him. But I'm going to give him that peace sign. Or maybe he may give him that peace sign once he leaves me a couple bus links behind. But anyways, um, I, I think you just have to you know, pay attention to what we're looking at these days. And the cars are just getting better as time goes on. And I don't think they are getting any worse. I mean, a lot of people complain about the interior of the past C5s and C6s and how bad it was uncomfortable, how bad the interior was. And, I mean, the interior of the C7s is just freaking great. I mean, just take a look at it. I mean, it's crazy. And if you haven't actually had the time to actually sit in a, uh, a Corvette Z01 or Z06 or a Grand Sport or a Stingray, take the time to go to a dealership and say, hey, I just want to sit in one of these and get a good feel of one of these. Because, you know, one of the YouTube channels I watched, Steve on the Speed 252, told me I need to do so. Um, these cars are great looking. They're just freaking phenomenal. I think they look way better inside. And as technology goes on, it's supposed to get better, right? If they had built the C7s on the outside look the way they are, but had the same looks and interior as the C6s and the C5s, then you're going to be like, womp, womp, womp. But you wouldn't want to buy one. And just like for people to say, like, they wouldn't want to buy the Corvette Z01 or the C7 body size in general, it's because um, it doesn't have the round tail lights. Well, you know, things have to get improved, right? Like, you want things to improve as time goes on. Like, perfect example, you don't want to work the same job and keep making the same amount of money you know, and then never get it increased. You want it, you want to get it increased at some point. You want you want technology to get better just like you want cars and everything else to get better in life. So um, you know, to say you won't you don't like this car, it's because of the round tail lights. So we have, you know, like five good reasons why people say, well five good reasons why they think the Corvette Z01 sucks is because it doesn't have a mid engine. It doesn't cost over five hundred thousand dollars or near the price of a supercar. It's built by Chevy. It doesn't look like a supercar, and it doesn't hold the value of a supercar. Well, let's talk about this. Regarding the value, now I went online and looked at some old ZR1s in the past, like the 2009, 2013, and with low mileage, I found one for like seventy thousand dollars. That's still a crap ton of money. That's the price of a brand new Z06. And so the ZR1 2019s are definitely going to hold its value. And then the 2021s are going to hold its value. And as time goes I mean, I think they're going to hold their value in general. Now, will they hold their value just as much as a Lamborghini or a Ferrari? You can't really compare the two because they're on two different price levels. Like, you can put 10,000 miles on a Corvette ZR1 and put 10,000 miles on a Lamborghini. Obviously, the Lamborghini is going to cost more because it costs more in general. So for you to say that you won't buy one because it's not going to hold its value, unless you're going to buy a car and hold it and hold it and hold it till you think it's going to reach that top of the dollar line to where you can sell off to someone else at some point, then go for it. But outside of that, like those are horrible reasons why someone should not like the Corvette Z01. I love the Corvette Z01. I love the body style. It is what it is. But anyways, thank you for watching this video. Thank you for tuning in. I appreciate you for just pushing that play button in general. I do have some Seek on the Speed 252 merch available. I would love for you to um, purchase some of that and help out the channel. Uh, right now, feel free to send me some emails. Um, if you like it, Seek on the Speed 252 at gmail.com. Send your photos, ask your questions. If you want to buy merch that way, which a few subscribers have, and I mailed them out their merch. So you receive that in a couple of days, by the way. Uh, thanks to you, Mike, for that as well. And, um, you know, I'm just very, 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 very grateful to be doing this. And, you know, Thank you for being part of the channel. Please subscribe if you haven't done so yet because I love how you're part of the community. Please hit that bell beside it and let's all grow together. And remember, I'm planning to be at Corvette and Carlisle as well. See you on the Speed 2 R2. It's out.